start with uh, Mr. Glenn, and we'll start with a nice, easy yes or no question. But feel free to elaborate. You all have two minutes, so you don't have to use all the time, but you can. First card in, less government, more individual responsibility, and with God's help, a better world. Do you have a problem with that as a Senate principle to follow? Less government, more individual responsibility, and with God's help, a better world. <laughs> uh, no, I have no problem with that. Whoever wrote that, that's a good thing for any of us. Um, and having answered that question, I'll take the remainder of the two minutes to uh, elaborate a little bit more on what I would suggest are some qualifications. I don't wear uh, either uniform anymore, but when I, when I was an Eagle Scout, like my son Hunter and two of his brothers are, and we've got a 13-year-old one rank away, I set an oath that I would do my best to do my duty to God and my country. And 20 years later in the Persian Gulf War buildup, I took another oath as some of these guys did, and chucked down there, uh, and Pete's sons and father, to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So I feel a sense of duty. And I've had a life's experience that has taught me when I do what my dad taught me to do, stand up for what I believe in, fight for what I love, that I can make a difference. And let me give you just a couple of examples. How many, how many of you think Michigan ought to be America's 23rd right to work state? Yeah, polls say 82% of Republicans agree with that. I moved to Michigan in the 90s. In the 80s, I ran the campaign that passed a right to work law in the state of Idaho. So that means I'm one of three people still alive who can actually say they've got a state to pass a right to work law. Randy and I are founding members of Michigan Freedom to Work. We're going to get it introduced here. And if I'm elected to the United States Senate, I'll co-sponsor a national right to work law because I think every American ought to be free to choose whether to join or pay dues to a union. Number two, how many of you think marriage is between one man and one woman? Yes. I've been president of the American Family Association of Michigan for the last 12 years and am one of two co-authors of the Marriage Protection Amendment that was passed by 60% of the voters here in Michigan. And how many of you would like, and I pledge that if you want one, I'll give you one, a United States Senator who will vote to pull the plug, take it off life support, and drive a stake through the heart of Barack Obama's socialized medicine scheme. Yeah. And as a county commissioner, I authored the nation's first medical savings account health care plan anywhere in America for county employees was asked to testify before Congress and was called a national pioneer for free market health care for reform. So that's the kind of message I'll take to the Senate. Thank you. Uh, same question to Mr. Randy Heckman, less government, more individual responsibility, and with God's help, a better world. Good principles uh, to guide you in the Senate? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, that's how a nation works. Is In fact, that's how America is designed. In fact, we're in trouble today because we're not following the operating instructions. Now, sometimes we guys will put a tie on, and uh, we'll go, and our, with our wife, we're ready to go out, and she looks at us, and she says, tie doesn't work. Well, there's something in our system that doesn't work in America. Our country was designed in the Declaration of Independence, as we all know those, those great words, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created, equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and among those are, help me out here, Life. All right, the pursuit of happiness, not the guarantee of happiness. It was 50 years ago this year that it was a Democratic president who stood on his hind feet, and said, ask not, help me finish this one, what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. That's pretty American. That's self-personal responsibility. That's what makes America work, when everybody is doing their part. But if our president today stood on his hind feet, I think he would say something like, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> Food, clothing, shelter, medical care, cell phones, you name it, come on. Do you realize that when we, all the wars we fought, we've been talking a lot of military up here because it's December 7th, all the wars we fought from the revolution <laughs> to present have cost $6.4 trillion. We started a war in 1964 called the War on Robert. Poverty. Yeah. Two years ago, it had already cost $16 trillion. And what is our debt today? $15 trillion. Is there a relationship? Yes, there is. It's we've broken the rules. America is to set the guidelines and let people succeed or fail. But we're not letting them fail. we got to change that. Thank you, Randy.
Heidi Heckman and Peter Konecci, less government, more individual responsibility, and with God's help, a better world. Good principles to guide you in the Senate. I think those are the only principles to guide us in the Senate. I tell you, there's something on There's very subtle powers that want to enlarge government without you know, being known. They're kind of like stealth powers. And as Gary said, you know, everyone agrees with the right to work. I, I strongly agree with the right to work in Michigan. I think that employment has to be between one employee and one employer, and there can't be any third party involved. That's one of the basic rights of freedom, one of the basic tenets of um, the pursuit of happiness. But the question is, do we want the federal government involved? And my feeling is no, we don't want the federal gov government involved. The federal government screws everything up that it gets involved in. It's proposed policies such as the Wagner Act, which encouraged union, union unionization. It had the Davis-Bacon Act. It has minimum wage laws, which are destructive to inner cities. And my feeling is that I want to repeal all of those laws and get the government out of industry. My uh, government has no authority whatsoever to manage industry. And if because we support right to work at the state level, it's just as bad for us to impose right to work legislation at the federal level, because it grants the federal government the authority, the authority to oversee our right to work. I want to get them out of it. In a free nation, if it's not a national issue, like right to work isn't, it's not national defense, national immigration patent office, in a free nation, the states have the authority to propose whatever they think is best. And right to work is extremely good. And we have 50 individual states that can look at the problem. And the 50 individual states are going to say, what's the best solution? And right to work legislation happens to be a very, very good solution. So the states that don't have it are going to be at a, de a deficiency. In Michigan is. Every single state that's incorporated right to work has prospered. Union unionization has actually increased. So. Uh, my time's up. But um, I don't want the federal government to have anything whatsoever to do with right to work. Thank you. And Marino again, it's uh, less government, more individual responsibility, and with God's help, a better world. Good guiding principles for the Senate. We don't have to say God. <laughs> You're in northern Michigan. It's okay. Oh, it's yeah. simply amazing it's to me how uh, President Obama and Debbie Stabenow has first eroded our freedoms. Then they've taken God out of everything we know, and I think that's disgusting. I just heard that Water Reef Hospital has got a mandate from the federal government saying that there is to be no religious articles brought on site, including the Bible, including uh, uh, any article, including U the U Eucharist, and any crosses. Now, of course, uh, they kind of denied that this this happened, but of course, uh, this morning on Fox News, they actually showed the document that uh, stated that. Um, so, yeah. Um, bottom line is, we've got to we got to restrict the government. The, go the federal government's out of control. They're getting involved in state right issues when they don't belong to state right issues. Um, telling Boeing they can't open a plant <coughs> in South Carolina, is um, but uh, we've got to start making them understand we have a constitution. The constitution spells out each one of the branches and what the limits and what they can do. Um, to go back to a question earlier, why am I running for the Senate? The easy answer to that is because the Senate's broken. They've sent 13 bills from the House over to the Senate, and not one has been brought to the Senate before. Why are they doing that? Because they want to make sure the Republicans are bad. So I get up every morning. i got to make sure our business does well. I got to make sure that we have, I meet my budget, I got to make sure I meet payroll, and I got to create jobs. So that's what I have to do, and I want to bring the same kinds of things to the Yeah, we're the, oh, new, new, that's right, sorry, go ahead. Scott and Goldman of Detroit. Yes. Um, yes, and all of that. <laughs> Yeah, less government, more personal responsibility, and with God's help, better world. The individual responsibility is linked closely to there being less government. Because <coughs> if individuals can't be responsible for themselves, then that's when they need the babysitter. You go and take care of them and guide them along as to what they can do and what they cannot do. 
one problem is often that, and a lot of people sometimes can, like, think they can just compartmentalize and separate the personal liberty issues and the economic issues. But let me just give you one example of how the two are tied together. With um, the national health policy, national health insurance. If everyone's forced to buy into a health insurance plan, you're all in the same pool. It used to be that, well, if someone had too much cholesterol in their diet, or if they smoked cigarettes, that was their problem. Well, oh no, but it's my problem too, because I have to pay to take care of you. See how that works. So more government, now you have less personal responsibility, and the government has to now tell you what to do with your own life. When you're responsible for your own life, then you could also have more liberty, because it was your choice. I, I went skydiving a couple times in my life, and when, when, before the first thing we had to do when we took like this mini skydiving class, is when, when this, before we were able to actually do this, we had to sign a statement clearly specifying, among other things, I understand skydiving is dangerous and I may be killed. <laughs> <laughs> you will die. <laughs> I, 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 I like the kind of America where people can choose to take whatever risks they want with their own life and are responsible for the consequences. The reason that we have a problem now is everyone else is being accountable for everyone else's consequences. No one's responsible anymore. <coughs> I'm Scotty Bowman. Find out more about my opinions at Bowman12.org. <laughs> <laughs>